you're here in person, you're watching online, but this isn't just a one-time thing. No. You're going to want to listen and recap mm -hmm. and reimagine everything you're experiencing this weekend, and you can do that now. Yes, you can do that. We have conference sets available. They are $40. You can get digital, DVD, or huh. CD, or you can get all of those for $60, Ooh. all the different formats. You're going to want to get all of these messages in your spirit, listen to them over and over and over again, and we're selling them right now knowing that every single service is going to be oh. so incredible, so miraculous, so power packed. So make sure you get those conference sets. And those are also available in our foyer. Prevenient messages. Now, isn't that something? Rod Parsley. That was pre-show talent Cameron Fontana and Elisa Henry promoting Rod Parsley's Dominion Camp 2022 conference. Talk about some slick marketing, I'll tell you. Hello, Bezel T3. Now, Rod Parsley has been uh, doing Dominion Camp conferences out of his World Harvest Church in Columbus, Ohio for a long time. This year, 2022, is the 35th year of this Pentecostal extravaganza. Well, if we had known that, if we looked into that a few years ago, we wouldn't have fallen off our spiritual horse when we found out that the very next step then was into a greater manifestation of the word. Now, I feel like today I'm in a pregame briefing of the ages, and I'm about to give you your instructions before you march out on the gridiron of the final conflict of the human family. I want to find somebody that the devils said I've got him, because I want to be standing ringside when God jerks him out of the devil's hand and begins to exalt him above measure. And God said, yeah, but the problem was you only did it to build your name. They don't want preaching like this anymore. Somebody must. God brought me back from the dead. So here I am. Hmm. See, any revival camp meeting worth its salt will start off with some kind of high energy music to get the juices flowing. And Dominion Camp Meeting is no different as it starts off with a huge musical presentation. Can I take you back? Okay, so 20 minutes of praise singing go by, and then there's a short interlude to keep the crowd pumped up. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as you turn your attention towards the screens. That's a lot of R's there. It's now time to shake things up and bring in some professional musical talent. They have traveled around the world forever making an impact in Southern gospel music and expanding the kingdom of God. But they're here tonight. Will you help us welcome the one and only the Crab Family? Crab Family. I must be out of it. I've never heard of them. Never heard of them. But it's the Crab Family Singers. Now, even Rod ends up getting into the act, okay? And it should be somewhat unsettling to any Christian when a pastor appears a little too comfortable in front of the camera. So after the crabs do their sing thing, we come to the all-important time, seeing that this was a camp meeting with free registration of seed sowing and harvest. I've been asked to talk to you for just a moment about seed time and harvest. What I say may offend you. Oh, we're about to be offended, all right. But there's 100 that God's talking to about a $1,000 seed. This is a piece of history. This is legacy. 
This is the ends off the pews from the old tabernacle. Maybe R.W. Shambach walked back and grabbed that when he was preaching. Maybe Rod Parsley rubbed his hand on it. Maybe Dwight Thompson spit on it. Maybe, come on, maybe Joyce Meyer kicked it. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you what. I have one of these in my office right by my door. And every morning when I go in to pray, I say, Lord, thank you for Holy Ghost power. And for those of you that would, we have about... A uh, hundred and fifty of these left. If you want to come tonight, bring your thousand dollar check. They will give you a card, and you can go into the lobby and you can get that legacy, and you can take it with you. And if you're watching online, we've set aside a good number for mm. you wow. because we want you to participate sure. in this first Dominion Camp meeting offering. Now, believe it or not, that was just a small slice of Bishop James' tithes and offering oratorio. Here's uh, another little snippet. When I was in Lagos, Nigeria, I woke up on Monday morning, God told me to give 10000 When I did, he gave me the greatest revelation that I've ever had. I looked down at these seed packs. On the back, it told what, what time to plant your seed. See, in total, Bishop James went on, well... One, one because, because this Dominion camp meeting has free registration. Well, they got to make up for that somehow. So he went on for about 22 minutes talking about seed time and harvest, tithes and offering, and pew ends. You know, I've heard of brisket uh, burnt ends. Uh, they're very tasty. Uh, but pew ends? No, not, not really. Now, that's probably enough time to gin up at least a dozen or so pew plaque sales, and maybe a lot more. I don't know. So once Bishop James is finished, another musical group comes on. And this one is called Southbound with somebody called Clint Brown, who I have never heard of. And after they're set, it falls on Clint to introduce the great man of God, in whom humility is nowhere to be found, in this conference anyways, the great Rod Parsley. Somebody in this building jump up on your feet, put your hands together. It reminds me of that old hymn, To Rod be the glory, great things he has done. No, no, that's not how it goes. It's to God be the glory, great things he has done. <sighs> that hymn is not about Rod, okay? But you'd think it was from the standing ovation and his very pleased expression as the crowd goes wild. Now, Rod gives recognition to the musical groups and other World Harvest luminaries uh, that were present and then quickly begins to mesmerize the crowd into submission. How does, Rob do, how does Rod do that? Well, by spinning, of course. Dancing is a language of joy. Waving is a language of surrender. Spinning is a language of warfare. I did not know that. says, come on, Judah, roar, but I say, come on, Judah, spin. <laughs> I dare you are all right clapping. You are all right and shouting, all about but you ain't never been spinning in church, so you better just go ahead and take you a spin. <laughs> That's wild. Now, this talk that uh, Rod is going to give is, is called <laughs> Ghostbusters, in case I didn't mention that before. Now, you know that this was coming at some point. Talking in tongues is the language of the Holy Ghost. Is I, sorry, we're having a little audio glitch there. No, I can't hear you. You backslidden? We still got quite a bit of feedback in here, fellas. Oh, you charismatic. Still got a real high-pitched uh, feedback going on in here, fellows, if you could. I said, 
said, lose your jaw. No, we didn't. I don't have the volume. We need you. Tongue talking. It's, it's still there. Uh, it's real in the high, high portion. Oh, stop complaining, Rod. I mean, you told them to speak in tongues after all. <sighs> well, they can't help how they sound, so why don't you give it a try? This rope, yeah, yeah, I make lawyers think. Interpret your tongue. It's real in the high, high portion. Oh, so he does speak in tongues and interpret. That's great. Okay, so enough of that funny business. Let's get back to Rod as he gets serious and lays out his main thesis for this sermon. <laughs> Bus! You, you know, it is so hard. I'm sorry. I'm so hard. It's so hard not to do this. You're going to have to forgive me in advance here. I ain't afraid of the new case. Don't get caught in the mind of the All right. Let's see if we can find some meat on this Pentecostal rib bone. Modern pulpit jockeys misguided in morality, deficient in doctrine, and derelict in their duty speak in silly, juvenile tones about everything and anything except what the head of the church said was of essential nature. Oh, okay. So you mean you're talking about this uh, whitewashed, uh, torn, jeaned, um, what did you call him? A pulpit jockey? Hmm. What I need from God can't come down until what he's put inside of me is sent up. So the staircase didn't go from top to bottom. It went from the bottom to top. Sometimes we're asking God to take away our anxiety. But until we control our thoughts and since, until we get ourselves out of the center of our anxious mental activity, how can God take away what we refuse to stop dwelling on? Hey, look at that. From the bottom up. From the bottom up. You know, boy, that looks a lot like the World Harvest stage now, don't it? Well, it is, okay, of course, because Rod and Stephen have been good buddies for quite a while, as you can see here, okay? Um, they've been hanging out, and, and I think now the student has become the master, and Rod is now taking cues from Stephen Furtick. Enough of self-serving strategies and feel good Sunday morning talks carefully crafted on Saturday afternoon to please everyone and offend no That's right. That's right. The gospel is bitter compared to the syrupy, sweet confections that the modern churchgoer demands. Truth without being, being marinated in the sweet comforting sauces of secularism and humanism mm -hmm. cuz it's all about you honey oh my goodness okay um 
I don't know who he's talking about right there, but you know, for one thing, the gospel is, is not bitter. It's the power of God unto salvation for all who believe, okay? And, and I just have to wonder, how self-unaware can Rod Parsley actually be? I mean, here he is bantering on and on, looking almost possessed with mic in hand and no Bible in sight. He is the epitome of a pastor with self-serving strategies, like the cheesy $1,000 pew plaques that help prop up all the things uh, that are Rod Parsley. Now, I did find a place where Rod does refer to the Bible. I'm going to mess you up now. I said, I'm going to mess you up now. Matthew 3.16, not John 3.16. You know that one. Okay, so Rod is going to mess us up with some scripture. When Jesus was baptized, he came up immediately out the water. Okay, Matthew 3.16 and the baptism of Jesus. Ergo, the Ghostbuster theme and the, the constant uh, waving of the, uh, the dove feathers. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see where this goes. And Jesus saw the Holy Spirit descending out of heaven. And it landed on him in the form of a dove. So Rod is going to now fill some time. He's on stage for, I don't know, probably an hour or so, but he's going to fill some time talking <laughs> about doves. A few things you need to know about the dove. Number one, a dove, here in Ohio, we have the largest Amish popul population in America. A lot of folks think that it's in Pennsylvania, but it's not. Huh. Okay, don't care. Uh, it's very unimportant and it's superfluous. A dove has to have a habitat. Conducive to his innate ability. It's such theatrics, you know, I mean, is that the draw? Is that what people love about guys like Rod Parsley? Because he's such a, he's such an orator and he moves around with such ease and grace. I don't know. And Rod, um, the Holy Spirit is not a dove. You know that, right? A dove was the visible symbol of the Holy Spirit during Jesus' baptism. But nowhere else do we find that image of the Holy Spirit in all of Scripture. That's amazing. Notice how everyone must obey Pastor Rod when he commands them to sit down. And they sit down. Oh, we can't talk in tongues on TV. We'll lose partners. What are you talking about? Get a quickening? They'll think we're crazy. You know how my son sitting right here got free after the doctor oh, said I'd never, never know I was his daddy in the middle of Dominion camp meeting 20 years ago, live on TBN, live on Daystar, 8,000 people on the building. God said to me right there, get up there and roll across that platform. <laughs> Rod's, Rod's son is not very happy at that moment. Doesn't look like it. And, and God told Rod to roll on the floor. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure what Rod is referring to about his son, Austin, 20 years ago. I know that he was hit by a bus back in 2017, but what he's talking about here must be something different. What is not, what, what, it, what it is not, okay, what he's not talking about, I should say, is anything remotely resembling the true proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can tell you this, the Holy Spirit is all about shining a light on Jesus. So anytime the Holy Spirit becomes the focus, it is there that you will not find the Holy Spirit present. So this marathon sermon, if one could call it that, uh, it begins to come to an end, and the pastors are called up to cry out to God. I want every preacher that we set 
in office today to run to this altar and I want you to cry like you've never cried to God in your life. Here they come. Here they come. What? What? What was that? What was that? Let's take another look. See, that's what I thought. As the minions approach the stage, Rod's son and daughter, well, they're out of there. <laughs> it's been said that the Parsley, the Parsley's family are known as the first family of World Harvest Church. Shake it! Uh, is that what the Christian is called to do? Shake hell like a rat terrier shakes a mouse? I don't think so. I mean, Christians are called to renounce ungodliness and worldly pleasures and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. That's Titus 2. Now, does this mean that we should not care about the evil that is happening all around us? Well, of course not. But again, Christians need to understand that Christ's kingdom and the civil kingdom are distinct. They won't be forever. One day, you know, heaven is going to come to earth and it will be one eternal kingdom. And, and even though God is in charge, ultimately, of both kingdoms, even at this present moment, he allows evil to exist, and we need to, as good citizens, fight against it. And as members of God's kingdom and children of the king, we are to pray that God would protect his people, give us good government officials uh, that are just and, and uh, want equality for all, things like that. Okay, one more, one more clip here. <clears throat> Yep, yep. And the woman goes down with a catcher behind her, conveniently, and a purple blanket to cover her backside. Friends, if anyone was exalted this evening, it wasn't the Lord Jesus. Sure, his name was invoked and he was mentioned in songs and, and all kinds of ways his, his name was used. But this whole spectacle was a man-centered, bring America back to God, Rod Parsley, gushathon. It's embarrassing. You see, be wary of any church that places this much emphasis on the pastor to the point of eclipsing the real head of the church, Jesus, the Christ of God. <laughs> 